Assalamu alaikum. Dear learners, I hope you are fine and doing great. This video is going to provide every bit of information related to the most used rotational displacement sensors in the world. I am talking about encoders. The name encoder just means something that can encode or translate information from one state to another state. Therefore, any device that is converting information from one form to some other form, preferably in binary form, is called an encoder. The device is used to encode the rotational displacement information into binary form are so widely used around the world that whenever you hear the word encoder, the only thing that will come into your mind will be the encoder which I am going to discuss in this video. There can be number of ways to encode the rotational displacement information into a suitable binary representation, but I won't be discussing anything other than optical way. The ease, reliability and robustness of using optical encoders surpasses the advantages offered by any other technology. Therefore, optical encoders are the most used and preferred type of encoders in range of applications. So getting right to the point, I'm going to discuss two types of optical encoders that you can easily find in industries or any out of industry device. The first type that I'm going to discuss is called incremental shaft encoder. By the name, you can figure out that these encoders can be mounted on a shaft, which is rotating of course, and they will provide incremental data. By incremental, I mean they will provide the rotational displacement with reference to their starting position. In easy words, they will tell you that how much the shaft has rotated since you have turned on the system or after you have started noting the rotational data. Therefore, these encoders will not give you the absolute position of the shaft. For example, if at the start the shaft was at let's say 30 degrees and after some time it has rotated to let's suppose 45 degrees, then the incremental encoder will tell you that the shaft has rotated by 15 degrees. But they will not tell you that exactly at what angle the shaft is right now. The way these encoders work is quite similar to how humans records the motion of some rotating object. Suppose that a fan is rotating at a very low speed and you want to record the number of rotations the fan is making in a particular time. Then what will you do? The obvious way would be to pick one fin of the fan and keep track of that fin. So whenever that fin will complete one rotation, you will increase the rotation count and let's suppose you did this thing for 30 seconds. At the end of 30 seconds, if the fin has made 20 rotations, you can figure out that the total rotational displacement that fan has made. And additionally, you can say that the fan is rotating at 40 rotations per minute, that is 40 RPMs. Similarly, an encoder in its simplest form will generate a pulse whenever the shaft completes one rotation. It will keep on counting these pulses and using these pulses, you can figure out the total rotational displacement the shaft has gone through and the speed with which the shaft is rotating. Now, the only problem that remains is that how these pulses are generated. Different kinds of encoders use different means of generating these pulses. For example, a magnetic encoder will generate pulses through magnetic means, whereas optical encoders will generate these pulses through optical means. For this video, I am only going to focus on optical encoders. Therefore, let us see that how optical encoders generate these pulses and how we can measure rotational displacement by using these pulses. Considering the simplest form of incremental shaft encoder, let's suppose that there is a motor which is rotating and so is the shaft attached with it. On that shaft, we have attached a circular disc that has one slot in it as shown in this figure. Moreover, as the shaft rotates, the disc will rotate and we have placed a through beam IR sensor through which the shaft is rotating. The disc will be blocking the IR radiations emitted by the transmitter of the through beam IR sensor from reaching the receiver on the other side. However, in one complete rotation, the slot in the disc 
will come in front of the transmitter and at that time the radiations from the transmitter will reach the receiver. Hence in one rotation one pulse will be generated by the receiver. This will be the output of the receiver and using this output we can figure out the speed with which the shaft is rotating. This is the simplest form in which you can find an incremental encoder and it is normally referred to as slotted opto encoder. The obvious issue with this encoder is that although it can give you the rotational speed of the shaft, it cannot provide you the rotational displacement at a resolution of less than 360 degrees. That is, it will only tell you that the shaft has rotated by 360 degrees by giving a pulse after one complete rotation. So the obvious remedy for this problem, which most of you might have guessed, is to make more number of slots on the disk. So what if we make four slots on the disk as shown in this schematic? Now after every 90 degrees rotation, the receiver is going to generate a pulse so we can know the shaft has rotated by 90 degrees. Moreover, the speed of the shaft can still be calculated by considering that four pulses means one complete rotation. Therefore, if in 60 seconds we are receiving, for example, 200 pulses, then the shaft would be rotating at a speed of 50 RPMs. For real life applications, motors should be rotated through precise angles and this requires resolutions much greater than 90 degrees. Therefore, we need more number of slots on the disk so that we can sense smaller rotations. The disk shown over here now has 8 slots and hence the receiver can now generate pulses after every 45 degrees of rotation. Let me stop over here for a bit and remind you what we said at the start of the video. I said that the encoder will encode the rotational information in some other form, preferably binary form. So a counter which is counting the pulses generated by the receiver has to transmit its count to some other digital system using binary data. Now if there is only one slot in the disk, the counter will count only one pulse in complete rotation and it can transmit this information using one bit only. In the next case, if there are four pulses in every rotation, then the counter will have to use two bits for counting up to four, as shown over here. Moving on, for eight slots, the counter will need three bits to count up to eight. Therefore, we will call the encoder with eight slots a three-bit incremental optical encoder. So I guess you get the idea. Now you can figure out the number of slots a 6-bit incremental encoder will have in its disk. Yes, it will have 64 slots and the receiver will be generating 64 pulses in one complete rotation. That is, it is going to generate a pulse after every 5.625 degrees. See how the resolution is getting better and better as we are increasing the number of slots on the disk. In practice, the disk is made of clear plastic onto which black lines are printed that will block the IR radiation from reaching the receiver, whereas the clear area will act as a slot. The printing is not that of a big issue, but as you are making more and more slots on the disk, the size of the slot has to be decreased as well, which forces you to decrease the physical size of the IR transmitter and receiver. Now this can put a limit on to how many slots you can make on the disk. Right now the state of the art commercially available incremental encoder is a 21 bit encoder. That is it has 2 raised to power 21 or 2,097,152 slots on the disk and hence it generates a pulse after every 0.000172 degrees of rotation. Take a second and try to appreciate the precise rotational motion this sensor can sense. So we can sense the rotational displacement quite accurately but there are still two problems that remains to be answered. The first one is that the incremental encoders which we have discussed till now can give you the amount of rotation but they cannot tell you the direction of rotation. 
that is whether the shaft is rotating clockwise or anti-clockwise and the second one is that how we can know the absolute position of the shaft because the incremental encoder will only tell you how much the shaft has rotated but not the exact position of the shaft well the problem of absolute position can be addressed by a technique called homing homing is used by all devices that are using incremental encoders what we do in this technique is that we rotate the shaft towards one side until it hits a mechanical stop positioned at a particular position we can also use a mechanical switch instead of a mechanical stop which will generate a signal when the shaft will hit that position once the shaft hits that point we note it and after that keeps the track of rotation with respect to this datum or starting point for example if we know that when the mechanical stop or the switch was hit the shaft will be at 40 degrees then using the subsequent output of the incremental encoder we can keep track of the shaft's absolute position an example of this technique can be experienced if you have used 3d printers which are quite common nowadays normally they are using incremental encoders to keep track of the position of the motor shafts whenever you turn this printer on the motors automatically rotates on one side until they hit the mechanical stop or datum point after that the incremental encoder data is used to keep the track of motors position now the only question that remains is that of the direction of rotation to solve this issue we have to modify the encoder setup by adding another through beam sensor and slots in another ring or technically called channel on the disk to keep things simple suppose we have a disk with four slots as shown over here and we call these slots to belong to channel a a similar set of slots can be made as shown in this schematic and we can refer it to as channel b note that the slots of channel b are displaced as compared to slots of channel a and this is done deliberately both channels will have their own through beam sensors and this will be the output of the channel a if the disk is rotating in clockwise direction and this will be the output if the rotation is in counterclockwise direction you can see that no matter what is the direction of rotation the output of channel a is same however for channel b this will be the output if the disk is rotating in clockwise direction in comparison to the output of channel a you can see that the pulses of channel b will lag because the slots of the channel a will come in front of the ir sensor a bit earlier than those of the channel b however if the disk is rotating in counterclockwise direction this will be the output of channel b now in comparison to channel a the output of channel b will lead the output of channel a as the slots of channel b will come in front of the ir sensor a bit earlier than those of channel a therefore now the incremental encoder or more fittingly called quadrature incremental encoder can sense the direction of rotation as well by seeing which channel output is leading or lagging incremental encoders record the rotational displacement in efficient manner however the method of homing for figuring out the absolute position is somewhat suboptimal homing has issues of time consumption and motors being rotated to hit the mechanical stop may cause physical damage if high torques are involved therefore sometimes instead of mechanical stops electrical switches are used to detect the absolute position of the shaft but still it is time consuming and forces you to add additional components in the whole setup this issue is optimally addressed by the other type of encoders which are called absolute encoders these encoders as their name suggests can provide the absolute position of the shaft at any time in addition to information that was provided by the incremental encoders an absolute encoder has a gray coded or a binary coded disk instead of a simple disk with single or dual channels the schematic over here shows a binary coded disk of 3 bit absolute encoder there will be three ir sensors that will read the output from the disk 
and over here you can see that a specific output will be achieved at a specific position only. Therefore, if the three receivers are giving an output of 000, it means the shaft is in such a position that this sector is in front of the sensors. On the contrary, if the output is 101, it would mean that this segment is in front of the sensors. Therefore, absolute position as well as the direction of rotation can be easily figured out using absolute encoders. Over here, you can see that we are using three bits and using three bits, we can divide the whole rotation or the whole 360 degrees into eight segments. However, if we want more precise absolute position of the shaft, we need to increase the number of segments and hence the number of bits. In practice, the disk of absolute encoder is gray coded instead of binary coded so that errors associated with binary counting may be avoided. Output of a 3-bit gray coded absolute encoder is shown in this animation. Now you must be thinking that if absolute encoders are much better in providing everything related to rotational displacement, then why incremental encoders are even used? Well, let me tell you that incremental encoders are much more widely used than absolute encoders. And the reason for that stems from the fact that a 10-bit quadrature incremental encoder will require two IR sensors and a much simpler disk, whereas a 10-bit absolute encoder will require 10 IR sensors and a much more complex disk. This complexity will add cost which is one of the major decision-making factor in practical world. Normally, an n-bit absolute encoder will cost you 10 times more than an n-bit incremental encoder. And even after paying so much more, you will be getting a larger sized absolute encoder as compared to a small sized incremental encoder. The only advantage you will get by investing so much more in absolute encoders is that you can avoid homing. Is that such a bigger advantage for which you are willing to invest at least 10 times more? If yes, then you can go for an absolute encoder. Otherwise, incremental encoders are sufficient enough. With the hope that you have understood the working principle and other nitty gritties of the optical encoders, that's all from my side. Thank you and take care.